Hi there. In this tutorial I'll show you how to create a chrome effect easily on a tribal shape with Photoshop. If you enjoyed this video please subscribe and leave a like. It will motivate me to create and share other creations. Let's start by opening Photoshop and importing our tribal shape design. For my part, it's a drawing I scanned in. We're going to rework our illustration so as to be able to transform it into a vector shape on Illustrator later on. To do this, we'll add a brightness, contrast, layer and increase, contrast, to 100 and brightness, by half. Then we'll add the level, layer, raising the left hand slider, which symbolizes the black value, and lowering the right hand slider, which is for whites. This will smooth out our illustration in black and white and make the paper textures disappear. Once done, we select all our layers and right-click to convert them into smart objects. Select our layer and press Ctrl plus C to copy and Ctrl plus V in Illustrator to import our layer into Illustrator. We'll be able to vectorize our shape, allowing us to rework it at will so that it's no longer pixelated. This means we can enlarge it and use it at any size. To do this, we'll click on our layer and in the top left-hand corner we'll click on Vectorize Image. This has just transformed our pixelated image into a vector shape, but in doing so we've distorted our image. To correct and make up for the image destruction caused by vectorization, we'll open the following panel by clicking on this button. In the Image Vectorization panel, we can play with several parameters to transform our vectorization. Next, we'll configure the Paths option which adds or removes points from our vector shapes. This will indirectly vary the level of detail in our shape. The next option, Angles, will make our angles more or less rounded. For this shape, we want a minimum in rounding, so I'm going to choose a value of 100%. The last parameter, Noise, will generate small variations by adding deformations to our shape. Not all these values have to be exactly the same. I advise you to set your own values, as this will inevitably depend on your shape and how you wish to render it. Once we've finished setting up, we'll click on Decompose. This will convert our shape into vectors and apply the previous settings. We'll then select our black shape and do a simple cut and paste. So, Ctrl plus X, select our white shape and delete it, then Ctrl plus V, to make our shape reappear. As I want a symmetrical shape, I'll use the Rectangle tool to draw a rectangle to cover the side of the shape I don't want to keep. I'll place it as close as possible to the center of the shape. Then change the color of my rectangle to white. Once positioned, I'll select all my shapes and open the Pathfinder panel. If you don't have it, go to Windows and click on Pathfinder. Once in Pathfinder, we'll choose the Division option, and I'll cut out all the shapes that are superimposed. Then I'll select all my points in the shape and delete them. In this way, we've cut out half of our shape. We can now select our shape and drag and drop it with Shift plus Alt plus left click to duplicate it in the same alignment as the first. We'll put it in the right direction by right clicking and selecting Mirror with the Vertical option. I'm going to bring our shape closer to the first one. To make our shape a single block, we'll select it in Pathfinder and use the Merge option. Here we've just finished vectorizing our shape. We'll change the color of our tribal shape to white. Next, we'll copy this shape and return to Photoshop to take care of the chrome effect part. In Photoshop, we'll paste our shape with the Smart Object option so that our layer isn't pixelated in case we need to make a change. We'll double-click on our shape layer to open the Layer Style panel and start creating our chrome effect by adding several styles. We'll start by adding Bevel and Emboss. We'll need to add the following values. Style, Inner Bevel, Technique, Smooth. In Shading, change Gloss Contour to this shape. Next, we'll direct the light from our object in the Angles option. To accentuate the effect, we'll increase the value of Depth and slightly that of Size.
Once this is done, we'll add reflections to our shape with the satin option. In contour, we'll add the same shape as before. Our blend mode must be set to multiply with the color black. Then we'll play with the following three values. Opacity to accentuate the effect, distances to widen the area of our reflections and size to enlarge the size of our reflections. To add more light and depth to our shape, we'll add the inner glow option and increase the size value. Once that's done, we'll add a little grain to our shape. To do so, we'll go to Filter, then Noise, and select Add Noise. In the new panel, we'll choose Gaussian and play with the Amount value. So much for our effect. We can continue to work on it, for example by adding a Brightness Contrast filter to accentuate the brightness of our shape. If we want to add color easily, we can add a gradient map layer and choose a shape gradient to customize. If you don't want to reproduce the effect yourself, I've included a link in the description to the video's PSD file which you can download free of charge. And here's our final rendering. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comment section. I'll be delighted to answer them or help you. If you like this video, please subscribe and leave a like. It will motivate me to create more tutorials of my creations. See you on the channel.